But if there is one thing I want you to know is that the gospel of Christ is what California needs. More than anything, the problem is not global warming, it's moral cooling. Jesus said the love of many will grow cold. That's why it's evil. That's why the evil is spreading. That's why comedians are filthy and vile and hopeless. That's why a drag queen is reading to our children in the libraries. That's why we don't know male from female. That's why we don't understand marriage. That's why we can look at mass human sacrifice called abortion and think it, it's almost a celebration. For years and years and years, things were a certain way, but they've changed. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 10, starting at verse 6, the prophet Samuel says to the future king of Israel these words. You, he says, how can I do this? How can I be king? How can I possibly do the job in such a dark and immoral time? And Samuel looks at him and says, The Spirit of the Lord will come upon you. And you will be changed into another person. And let it be that when these signs come to you, that you do as the occasion demands. In order to help me preach, I want you to repeat this phrase after me. Do as the occasion demands demands when I preached against crack cocaine which I did for years when I preached against heroin when I preached against gang violence no churches criticized me then one day I woke up and found out that the worst drug in the ghetto was not crack cocaine it was socialism I'm not looking for right or left I'm looking for the radical middle. The people, you know, you know who said it best? It was Charles Barkley. He said, most white people do not hate black people. Most black people do not hate white people. But there are politicians that keep us angry at each other in order to keep their jobs and keep their money. So we need a rebellion, a rebellion of love. We need a revolution in California a born-again, spirit-filled, tongue-talking Christian that said, God's Spirit has come on me and changed me into another person. How many of you are ready to obey God? This is revival right here. This is revival. This is what revival looks like right here. So I said to my friends in college, if I could have you over to my mama's house, you will eat until you hurt yourself. <laughs> and you know, it's not just true of Mexican food, it's true of any authentic food. And one day, my wife and I, we were on a national tour. We went to New York and sampled unforgettable Italian food. Went down to New Orleans and had seafood that you cannot forget. Went to Chicago and had a steak that is still right there. <laughs> and uh, then we came home. Sometime you husbands, after you've been gone for a long time, you need to go with your wife when she goes on her errands. Now my wife forgets to eat. I've heard her. At the end of the day she'll look at me and say, I forgot to eat. I said, I've had many things I have forgotten in my life. How many of you remember to eat? How many of you get reminded to eat? So we, I followed her around, went to the bank, picked up the mail, did this and that, some things with our dog, and then uh, finally we ended up at Costco. You can tell when somebody shops at Costco, right? They say, would you, would you like some more sugar? 
I hadn't eaten all day. I was looking at Jesus saying, one more hour and this is a fast right here. <laughs> this counts as a fast. She's fine. She forgot. We ended up in the food court. And I had a slice of Costco pizza and I looked at my wife. I said, I said, this is more delicious than anything we ate on the road. <laughs> and I'm going to explain why. I was hungry. <laughs> See, you were in a church service, and you walked away and said, oh, that wasn't that good. No, it was probably good. You just weren't hungry. <laughs> you weren't hungry. And there is an acute hunger in the American church for revival. Everywhere I go, I hear the same thing. I wish my pastor would stand up and be bold and take a position on marriage, on abortion, on the craziness of wokeness. Let me tell you something. The hour that we're in is a strange hour because two things have come together that seem odd but they are now together. They have converged. The idea of rebuking the immorality of the left and the right is now anointed. There's an anointing to expose corrupt politicians. Here it comes. Get ready. It's coming. How many of you have ever been in a fight in a schoolyard? Hallway, back, yeah. To me, it is as important as geometry. It probably helps you more in life than geometry ever will. But if you've ever been in a fight, you'll notice this because it's a law of the inner city. It is not when that man looks at you, that kid, and goes, your mama. That doesn't start the fight. It's the guy standing behind you that goes, ooh. Am I right? And when Sacramento told you that you had to shut down your church, the Holy Ghost was standing right behind you. Come on, somebody. Yeah. And that's exactly what should have started the fight. I want you to understand that they, I was told that if I were to speak as a voice against immorality in our politics, immoral, they told me, well, Romans 13 tells you not to do that. It tells you don't oppose government. And I say to them, what have you been smoking? Read Romans 13, verse 3. It says, the authorities which are appointed of God are not a threat to the righteous. Now, we're listening to Washington tell us now that we will not be able to preach that homosexuality is a sin. That will be a hate crime. We're already watching that up in Canada, they're locking down churches. And did you ever believe the day would come when American pastors would be sent to jail for leaving their churches open? Now, that day has come, that day is here. And if you really believe that, that version of Romans 13 where you're taking out of context, there would be no United States of America because we became a nation by a righteous understanding that Thomas Jefferson said that King George, your laws are now immoral. Your laws are a threat to the righteous. And when one nation understands that they must break those bands because our Creator has endowed us with certain inalienable rights as life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Let me tell you, you young people need to wake up. 
Socialism is the heroine of politics. Socialism is the heroine of politics. And God means to tell you it is a counterfeit. The feeding of the poor is the job of the church. The giving of opportunity and negotiating racial justice is the job of the church. It has never been, nor will it ever be. That's why he was called Reverend Martin Luther King. And you have to understand this. It is the Spirit of God that makes men love each other. It is the Spirit of God that tells you don't put that needle in your arm again because your body is the temple of God. It is the Spirit of God that changes a culture. Somebody... Yes.